Let's do sentiment analysis on my syllabus. So a little different type of text mining technique as compared to a word cloud. So we're going to use um, the word counts that we created previously. If you remember, we generated that from a term document matrix that we turned into a matrix and then we generated the rows of that. So just to take a look at what that looks like. You can see, if you remember, it had the, the numbers, which is how many times that word was mentioned in all the documents combined, or my syllabus collectively, and the word itself. So the first thing we want to do is get the total number of words just to see how many things were, were mentioned. Don't probably need that going forward, but we can see. Because what we really want to do is we want to count how many negative words and how many positive words. So to do that, we're going to read in a positive file and a negative file. Now I've specified this as a string with a location on my hard drive of where to read it in, and I'll read in that file. And then if you notice, there's 2,000 positive words, to be more specific, 2,040, but actually not that many. Because if we do a header, or a head, we take a look at the header of the file, and we can see that there's some, some description about this file. Um, and you can see actually where I got the file from. So this is the location that you can go and take a look at and download the files yourself if you need to. I need to get rid of that because I only want my file to be positive words and obviously the negative one to be the negative words. So use some simple ve vector manipulation to remove the first 34 rows. And now if we take a look at the positive words, we have positive looking words. We're going to do the exact same thing with the negative words. So we'll remove those negative words. And we'll... So now we have... You can see 4,800 negative words. A little bit less now. 4,783 negative words, and there they are. So there's almost twice as many negative words as positive words apparently, in the English language as we mentioned before. So now let's actually match all the words with the positive words. So what do you think this function actually returns? Let's take a look. So all zeros, not all zeros, but if there's no match, it's going to be zero. So if we do the first 30, we can see somewhere around 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. The seventh one had a number in it, which is an index. It's an index into the words array. So if we take a look at, um, sorry, the positive array. If you take a look at 1987, the positive word is work. If we take a look at words, sub 7, work. So this is how we're kind of linking together the two different um, capabilities, right? If you will, kind of the positive words and all the words that are there. And this kind of is the, the matching process of going through it. And again, if there's no match, we return zero. Otherwise, we return the index of how to get into the, the P. So now we can take a look at the positive words. Things like work, words, appropriate availables are all positive ones. And we can take a look at the number of positive words. So there were 62 positive words, because we basically did this exact same logic we did before for word counts. So it's the same thing, just now we're doing the counts instead of the words. Now we're going to do the same logic for the negative words. So now we have the number of negative words. Oh, actually, that's the number of words, it's all the negative words. That's the root. If I can read type. Here we go. So if we want to calculate a ratio, it would be um, you could store it. So what that says is my syllabus was about twice as positive as it was negative. And I showed you the negative words up here. 
So one of the issues we talked about in sentiment analysis is some words have kind of like two meanings. A good example of that is problem. So the second negative word was problem. Although problem in my syllabus is a negative word, we're talking about a problem to solve. So in the context, it's not positive or negative, it's just you know part of the challenge of the course or part of the homework, if you will. So if I would have used a different word than problem, if I would have used you know, assignment, for example, it probably would have been not negative or positive. So this is kind of an example of maybe a word that I didn't interpret to mean as a negative word in my syllabus, but my algorithm did. Same thing perhaps with issue, for example. Um, certainly break, maybe that's, you know, fall or spring break or something like that, of course, break as opposed to the actual code breaking, for example. So these are words that, that um, might have been interpreted as negative in general, but in my syllabus, perhaps not. Um, so that kind of gives you an indication that perhaps these algorithms aren't perfect, but gives you a kind of a high order kind of indication of what the document is, whether it's positive or negative.